Hello everyone. My name is Tony. I am an OpenStack technology evangelist and I'm working for Mirantis IT as a L2 support engineer. So today I'm going to share with you some pieces of the tema about how to be proactive and how to support your customers. So let's start. So today uh, we're going to talk about some architectural issues created by humans. Also we'll discuss some common workflows, how to support which operation technologies we have. And also we will have a common view um, how to avoid the cloud to break down and other stuff like that. So let's start from the proactive support and customer care. And we'll start from the some stupid <laughs> issue related to MySQL. So the issue related to MySQL is when you're creating some small disk size, disk partition for your MySQL. And unfortunately, for the OpenStack, it's not enough. For example, those 20 gigabytes. And what you will see in a moment. Your MySQL will not go, and probably your OpenStack will go down. So the issue is very simple, but you have to avoid this issue anyway. And if you like to have a MySQL as a backend for your OpenStack services, you have to create a huge partition, a huge disk. The next issue, <laughs> actually the common one, because usually customers um, which we care about, they usually got this issue. <laughs> so it's about a rabbit and some storage backend. For example, I used TAF here in this slide. So, And it also about the piece of network. So many of you understand the um, default topology, default network topology, when you're creating some manage network, storage network, you have a PXC network for uh, boot your nodes. But sometimes, sometimes customers trying to drop each one inside one LAN. So, and it also, some stupid architectural issue. Guess you can avoid it in one click, just provide you with uh, some additional band and everything should be okay. If not, your backend, your storage will kill your rabbit. As I understand, everybody knows what rabbit does, yeah? Everybody knows what, okay. So, the next issue is also default architectural issue which we're facing with when we care about our customers. It's about the HA structures. Many of us trying to care about our services, care about users, but we definitely don't know how to avoid such situations with a split brain or something. So, and the answer here is to use HA. When you're trying to create your OpenStack Cloud and deploy it, you probably think, oh, maybe I can use one controller and one compute node and it should be enough. But no, it should not be. Or okay, the next case, probably you're going to use three controller nodes or maybe two. I don't know, actually, it's up to you. But Okay, you have a choice and you did this and did this without any covering of pacemaker or a chip proxy. So you did it manually by your hands and sometimes your services will have a split brain. So you will have nothing. The next issue, it's interesting one because it causes it because of reduced footprint. Who knows what it is? Nobody? So let me just 
give you an example of that. So reduced footprint, and when you're um, when you have uh, some couple of nodes, and you can deploy your um, control plane there like VMs. Also, you can uh, deploy compute services also like VMs. So it will be uh, fully uh, virtual environment for your tests, expertise, and what you're going to do there. So, but some folks, <laughs> they usually create by this model the production clouds. So, and it, and it is also not a good idea <laughs> because if you will lose your node or replace it DOS controller VMs, you will also have nothing. Because you will just have those computes and that's all. You will not be able to spawn any VM. So this is also strange and interesting architectural issue that we're facing. And it's really new because um, we faced this issue maybe um, a few months ago, just new one. The next one, it's about Zabbix. So as we discussed in the previous first slide about MySQL, if you create some small partition for your uh, database, um, uh, it will be uh, just will be just killed by the capacity of the data. So, and how to create that data? You just need to put your Zabbix table inside the OpenStack MySQL, and after, your Zabbix will kill your MySQL if something will goes wrong inside the controller. Uh, for example, some service like Nova will be switched off and you will see some messages inside the Zabbix and Zabbix will generate uh, a bit amount of data so and you will see how Zabbix will kill your MySQL and your OpenStack as well so really interesting thing but fortunately here in Mirantis operations we have a lot of knowledge and we have a lot of articles how to avoid such behavior how to fix so if you guys would like to get understanding or properly get those articles, you can call Mirantis sales department and we will help you to understand how to work with the Zabbix. So if you already have um, our account supporting account, you can just create a ticket and we'll, we'll provide you with article how to uh, move Zabbix out the uh, OpenStack MySQL DB if you have this feature if you have this installation already in production. Okay, let's go next. Let me see, okay. So, how to avoid cloud to break down? It's an interest, interesting tema, and I would like to um, split it on three areas. So, the areas will be the covering about users, about services, and the stress. So these areas will help you to avoid the breakdown, to prevent it. There is a K word here, to prevent, because you can't create the proactive support without any proactive steps, without preventing something. So let's talk about users. It's always important to care about guys who provide you the income. So let's say someone asked you about, I would like to have a cloud. Please give me this option. And this guy probably will uh, give you one dollar. And else you will have uh, more guys who would like to give you one dollar. But you have one folk who can give you five. So there is a key customer. And you have to care about his capacity, his VMs, more than usual. But you also have to care about those guys and more than they have this care on the VMware or Amazon. So you have to understand one thing. If you would like to create your cloud for your users, you have to calculate firstly 
the capacity, which performance you will have, and how to avoid issues. So I recommend to you have a plus 30 percent of amount of that capacity to your calculations. And it should be a good idea. So the rule here, the huge knot is never enough. So remember that rule. A couple of words I would like to say about the quotas and policies. So since we have this guy with five bucks and uh, those three guys with one, we also have to understand how to man manipulate with them and which quotas, which uh, policies we can grant to them. So which capacity they will utilize. So, and if you have this king customer, you should be really happy. Guess he grants you five. The next area uh, is everything related to services. As we know, the OpenStack is a service call platform. So let's describe it as like it's dots. There are dots in the space, yeah, in the some space. So, and they should be connected between themselves somehow. And you have to be proactive to create those stable connections between those services. See, those guys would like to be in HA, <laughs> by the way. And the next slide about this. If you have service and you have stable connection between those services, between nodes, you have to put your services in each A as much as you can. Because, as you remember the previous slide with the problematic of the each A, it usually happens. So, and also the recommendation here for this teamwork, you have to uh, provide your services with 20 percent of uh, amount of uh, operational power. So, simple, kind of. The rule here, the service H A is even important. Use that rule and your incomes will be stable. Okay, the next area about our theme of how to avoid cloud chip breakdown is the stress. Um, I know that it can be painful when you have some issues inside your cloud and you don't know how actually to fix them, how to avoid them or prevent. Yes, you have some monitoring solutions and you have experience and you already created some cloud, but you, um, but you, any, any way you got this issue, the customer faces it. And probably you, it, it's a kind of now niche and probably you have some page or work around somewhere and you um, need just to fix some service or something to provide your customers with stable work. So here is the typical scheme how you can perform it. So there is a CI CD thing inside this square. So I'm not talking about CD systems at all because uh, usually huge enterprises utilize the system. They have uh, uh, stagings, they have uh, a lot of them, they have a lot of production clouds. But anyway, they have some place where they can check and verify some patches, workarounds, and probably they can uh, create build tests and packages. So it's an another story, I would say. But if you're from small company, you can just create some small staging environment, let it be one controller and one compute, and check your patches, check your workarounds, and what you're going to do with some services and uh, configuration files there. And also, the thing, you have to move those changes into the production cloud only with the maintenance window. So my tenants window, it's even important as well. So, because let's say your customer is going to create a VM and uh, this customer is going to do this uh, through Horizon. And 
your workaround or patch fixing something in that horizon, and you have to restart some services, or might be you will change something inside horizon view, or uh, maybe you will um, uh, create new strings there, new options for that VM. And this guy is going to uh, open the page, he's trying to start a VM, but you're going and pushing some buttons and boom, he has nothing to do. He has issue, he creates a ticket for you. So to avoid such behavior, you have to uh, create a maintenance window and put your tested patch or workaround there on the production on that service through maintenance window. Okay, the last one about this is about rollback. So sometimes, even if you tested something inside the staging or CI CD system, probably your patch is not successful. So what you're going to do with this? You have to uh, be clue and create some rollback procedures. What it means? Let's say you did this, you created the workaround, you scaled and maintenance window, you fixed the service, but something is broken. So I recommend you, if you are not using Salt, if you're not using Ansible, uh, Puppet, or, or other systems, which can mm, provide you rollback in one moment, probably you have to um, create some script, some short script, how to change the package or change the configuration file. Maybe you will create some uh, backups and you will restore them. So this area is just showing how to manage and how to create this process right. And the rule here, be sure that everything is tested before you're trying to roll in something on the production cloud. Okay. Right now, I'm going to share with you some support best practices which were learned from the really smart folks, bless you. So those best practices, they're simple, but they can give you a breeze of the fresh air for your cloud if you will have something, some issues or um, will provide you with some time frame if you will have something uh, which you have to fix. Okay, so let me start with some, uh, some story. Two years ago, maybe three, some folk called me and said, hey, Tony, we have the issue with AMC VNX volumes that are stuck. Please help us. Okay, I said, so could you just provide me with the configuration file and some piece of logs I will just uh, get understanding what is going on inside. Okay, and he did this and I got the configuration file and I, when I um, uh, have seen inside, I have seen the around 10 backends. So that mean that uh, that guy care about customers. If they have some issue with some backend, he can just give them the option to use different backend. So if you have the option to use NetApp, AMC Linux, Ceph, LVM, anything related to your Cinder things, please do it, please use it. If you don't have anything, but you have some nodes, you have capacity, you can create two default backends, like LVM, Ceph, or LVM, Ceph, one Ceph, two. And if you will have some issue, you can be proactive and you will be able to provide your customer with uh, uh, this feature. And you will have a time to fix what is going on inside the backend which faced with issue. The next best practice is about the core reservation. As you can see on this slide, and this as well, 
So we usually facing this issue, our customers usually facing them. Around 76% of our customers they faced the issue with high CPU utilization. And you also can see the count of incidents here. Um, since we started to uh, teach them how to resolve the course, so their, the count of incidents are decreasing. So we recommend to you resolve the one core for operational system interrupts needs. And for one core for each NIC. So why it is? For example, your customer created some ticket. And he said, my VM is not working. OK, fine, he said. And you're going there inside. But you can't use SSH. Why? That's because you don't have capacity for that. Guess you don't have reserved the one core for OS interrupts, so you can't interrupt and you think it's working inside. So you can go, even go there inside. Or the different story. You have the um, connection, but you're trying to ping some uh, address, some of a controller, but you can't reach it. You can't, uh, you, maybe you can't ping, but you have some issues with uh, packages, packets. So that is why we recommend you to uh, do these things. And you can use for that purposes CPU Affinity. It's nice. Um, software so you can Google it and you can just do these in a few steps with a few comments. The next hacky trick is from old old for time. So when I was just small engineer in some small um, telecommunication company, we usually got on such issues when the customers facing with a um, some strange behavior, they have a lack of capacity of uh, the disks. So, and we did one thing, we just created um, some file, delete me if something. And we put this file uh, on each disk of the node. And what will be if you will have a lack of capacity there? You'll be able to just delete this file and you would be able to fix something. Delete logs and other stuff. I know what you have there. Anyway, the goal here is a time. Yes, you will have this time when you will use this hockey trick. And also, um, as addition, you also can use Tune2FS to um, also give you uh, a breeze of the fresh air for your notes because for uh, default, it's utilized around 5% of capacity, and you can decrease it, uh, for example, on 2. So you will have LCO capacity. So, but remember, this will work on, only on XT file systems. Yeah. The next best practice is also because of the futuristics think about a uh, uh, reduced footprint when you're trying to create your um, um, your cloud like uh, VMs on the some node. So sometimes you also have a lack of capacity for your controller because uh, you have some services which uh, utilize your disk. So the best way is just to have some comments like on this slide. You create some disks in additional. You use virg to attach the disk. You also go in and to check that you have those disks which were attached to that VM, that controller VM, for example, using the virg. So then you just can Google some comments or just use the man of the virs, how to understand, uh, uh, how to add uh, uh, and uh, edit some uh, pieces of settings for that VM. Then you can go inside that controller, which are virtual, and 
uh, perform some commands to resize the, uh, that capacity, that disks. So, and after you can check that you have the capacity and your control plane will be safe. Then after relax. Okay, many words were uh, spending to talk with our customers about the EGA strategy. And on this screen, we have some diagrams which show now the incidents registered with the non EGA services. Unfortunately, we have around 19% um, of users, uh, sorry, 18% of users which uh, still don't covering their services with uh, HA. So they just, I don't know how, how they actually do this. Because if they're using uh, fuel, they are okay and they, are, they have a peacemaker there inside. So they can work with this without any issues. But anyway, we have some custom installations and they still don't want to use a HA proxy or don't want, don't want to use the pacemaker itself. So. Um, they have uh, issues with the split brain or uh, other, other issues. So that's the best practice to use HA. If you like clouds, if you have a lot of services, a lot of nodes, I don't really can't imagine how you can avoid the HA structures at all. OK, we have time. So the few words I would like to say about cloud monitoring, because we, we can't be proactive without any monitoring. We have to uh, see what is going on inside our cloud. We have to understand what's going on inside uh, VMs and other stuff. So our company is providing our customers with two uh, solutions. It's Zabbix and a Stack Lite. Let's just describe the Sabix and Stacklight in a common view. I know that many of you already know these uh, technologies, these monitoring systems, but anyway, without those pieces, our picture uh, wouldn't be valid. So Zabbix is a good tool to monitor the state of your um, uh, services, the state of your nodes, um, it's optimized to work with the OpenStack services. So if you will use Fuel or um, other our pro, uh, products, the Dubix uh, can be installed there as a plugin. So and you'll be able to do nothing, just install it as a plugin, uh, put some button, and uh, that's all. Um, Dubix will know about everything, what is going on inside your cloud. So, and you will be happy. And if you will have some issues like this one, this red, you will see the behavior and you'll be able also to see the CPU utilization here and you'll be able to fix something or prevent something using this Zabbix tool. So there is a common hint. If you're using fuel, you can use them. If you are not using fuel, you have Zabbix standalone mode. Uh, it's also simple for any um, strange behavior that Zabbix, you can just restart it. It's like kind of Windows way, but anyway, it's, it's work. Yeah, it's working. The stack light. The stack light uh, is also known as the Mirantis Logging Metering Alerting Toolchain. Um, it's operational heels and response monitoring solution. So. Um, if you would like to get understanding what is going on in this project, you can go on the, our website and you would be able to get a full understanding about its kitchen. So you can go, you can get understanding. The core components uh, of the stack light is collector plugins, um, in Fluix. It's Elasticsearch, Kibana plugins, Nagios alerting plugins. There is a typical scheme of the stack light. So it's easy to get understand what, what, what it is. It's just a good monitoring system which provides you not just a common view of your instances, of your 
um, nodes, it also provides you with a uh, business KPI. So if you have something which you would like to count, your money, for example, or I don't know, uh, some other stuff, metrics, so you can use TechLight. Fortunately, this feature uh, is installed in CCP as well. And you can install it for fuel as a plugin, so no issues here. And also, we have to mark the one more rule here about the monitoring. Monitor as much as you can. So if you have something, it should be, it must be monitored. Because you can't be proactive. Because if you will see something, you'll fix it. If not, OK, it wouldn't be fixed, never. The last thing which I would like to uh, discuss with you, it's everything related to common um, support strategies. Right now, we have two of them. It's operational and managed operations. Let's discuss the first one. Let's say that you have some user, and this user creates some ticket because he faces some issue. And there is you or me, I don't know, this guy from Mirantis. So you get this ticket, you fix it, and you provide this guy with a page and workaround uh, um, with the CICD as well, yeah. And what will be if you will have three guys? And they also create a ticket for you. Which ticket you should uh, fix first, which issue you should fix first, which ticket you have to care about first. So you can create some strategy. Let's say that you will mark those tickets like urgent, high, and low. Urgent, it's when your um, cloud is, um, when your uh, control plane of the cloud is in down state. The high will be when customer has the issue, but he can't live with the issue. Probably is lack of backend or something, or VM slow work. So, and the low, it's, let's say it's kind of feature. Let's say that customer would like to spawn three VMs, but uh, you can grant them more than two. So you prioritize them, and um, you can go inside each of the ticket, get the understanding what is going on there inside, and fix it. With this spatial chain which you created for yourself, you can create your own um, system and your own strategy how to care about the uh, uh, tickets. Maybe you will uh, use not just uh, prioritize it, maybe you will have some time frames when customer would like to fix the issue, maybe um, you have some strategy and um, uh, policy that you're, you have to fix some uh, urgent issue in one hour or 15 minutes. So anyway, you can use this strategy, you can uh, you use this common picture because it's just common view of the operations, more granular than uh, I'm describing. Or if you're stuck and you'd like to get understanding about this strategy more, you can call our Mirante Sales Department. They will help you to understand which policy, which thing you have to use, um, how to create your operations. So don't hesitate, just call us. Managed operations. The managed operations, it's a new era of the support of the clouds, of the OpenStack clouds. In this scheme, we don't have any user. Yeah, we actually have users, but they're hidden. They're just using our cloud, they um, utilize our capacity, but they're not asking us to create something, ticket or fix something. They, they don't know about anything, what is going on inside that cloud which you're providing them with. So you have um, a bunch of, a group of the OpenStack ninjas. They know everything about the services, about the strategy. 
And those guys using on this picture, for example, Kibana and Stack Lite, they can use Zabbix as well. Using that, this tool, they trying to prevent the incidents. They trying to prevent the issue. If they have seen that you have a lack of capacity and uh, soon the cloud will go down, they can add this capacity. They also will create some tickets for themselves. So, and they will provide you and your customer with a fix. So, that's all. So, if you guys have any questions or any trouble with anything related to OpenStack and how to support, you can call us. Because we have a lot of guys who care about our customers. We have a huge expertise in that. So we can help, support, and just give you some articles and knowledge. We can share it with you, actually. If you have any questions, you can contact me directly. There is my email addresses. And I also, I also put the, my business cards here as well. You can get them. So if you have any question, you can call our sales department, or you can call me or uh, drop me an email if you have something to say, or if you have some issue and you would like to get some article. So if you have any questions, please ask. OK. Then thank you.